Hey guys, I'm Neil, and welcome to my channel, Neon Black Reviews. So tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about A Quiet Place to Kill. Uh, this is an Italian giallo film. Uh, it came out back in 1970, and it was directed by Umberto Lindsay. Uh, it stars Carol Baker and Jean Sorrell. Uh, it is the uh, third film in the Lindsay Baker collection that I have, uh, which is a collection of four giallo films, all directed by Umberto Lindsay and uh, starring actress Carol Baker. And so if you've never seen this film, uh, the description of it is, a troubled race car driver plots to kill her ex-husband at the behest of his new wife, but their scheme quickly goes awry. So that's the basic idea uh, behind this one. Uh, Carol Baker plays the role of Helen, who is the race car driver. And that's how the film starts out. We see her driving her Formula One race car, or I guess it's Formula One. That's what it looks like anyway. I don't know if they had Formula One back in 1970. I'm not really sure. Uh, but anyway, it's a race car. She's driving it around the track, and she ends up having a pretty bad accident and has to go to the hospital. Uh, when she gets out of the hospital, uh, she gets a request from her ex-husband to come stay with him. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, she ends up going, and uh, when she gets there, she, uh, she meets his new wife, uh, who uh, was actually the one that sent the request that she come and stay with him, uh, because, uh, yeah, she wants to kill uh, her husband, Maurice, and she gets uh, Helen in uh, on this plan. Uh, and there's, uh, there's some reasons why she chose uh, Helen uh, to help her that I won't get into, just uh, to keep this a little shorter. Um, but long story short, they do plot to kill him, and um, things just do not go as planned. And I'm not going to go into the plot any further than that, uh, mainly just because of spoilers. Um, but, uh, but needless to say, um, yeah, this is just one of those uh, crime thrillers uh, where there is a murder plot going on. And uh, yeah, and like I said, it doesn't go uh, according to plan. So, um, you know, we get a lot of little... Uh, um, I don't know how you, it, I won't say it's twists and turns, uh, but the plot thickens <laughs> as we go along in this one. Uh, and I have to admit it, you know, it kept my attention. I thought it was fairly interesting. Again, this is, uh, you know, one of these early Giallo films, uh, that, uh, are just not what I think of, uh, you know, when I think about, you know, what a Giallo film is. We don't have a, you know, a mysterious killer on the loose. So uh, this is just simply a, uh, a crime thriller, um, but like the ones here uh, from the Lindsay Baker collection, they they have a lot of melodrama in them as well. Uh, you know, it's about these relationships, uh, you know, between the characters. You know, uh, yeah, just uh, we had Orgasmo, and then we had So Sweet, So Perverse. Uh, so it was all you know, uh, you know, some cheating husbands, and you know, and some lying wives, and and some things like that going on. So. Uh, this is another very similar uh, type story. Uh, and in fact, um, the first three films in this box set, Orgasmo, So Sweet, So Perverse, and A Quiet Place to Kill, are considered a trilogy. I'm not really sure why the films don't have anything to do with each other, uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, but maybe it's because um, the motivations and everything uh, in these three films is very similar. The stories are different, but, you know, the motivations are still basically the same. So I guess you could say they're the same type of story, uh, just told three different ways. Uh, so maybe that's why they're considered a trilogy. Another interesting about uh, this, um, the original uh Italian title, or not the Italian title, the original uh, title for this film was Paranoia, uh, and it was changed um, to A Quiet Place to Kill. I don't know if that was for the U.S. release or whatnot, um, but the um, the U.S. release of, of Orgasmo, which is the first film, is also Paranoia, so it's kind of kind of strange there. I think I mentioned that in my review of Orgasmo that it was, uh, you know, called Paranoia when it was released in the U.S. 
And it didn't really make any sense because there's not a whole lot of paranoia, or at least that I was able to catch on to uh, in the film. Um, but here, I guess you could say that it is a little bit more uh, aptly named. Um, so, yeah, there is a little paranoia going on in this film. So, um, definitely, I could see where the title comes from. Uh, and in this case, I'm not really sure why they retitled it A, a Quiet Place to Kill. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if you watch the movie. Uh, but anyway, uh, as far as the film goes, uh, it's very similar in style uh, to the first two films in this box set. There's not really much more than I could, that I could add to it. Um, again, you get this uh, this crime thriller story, uh, and as it goes along, uh, you know it it plays around with the the themes a little bit. Um, you know, you find out you know more information as you go along. Uh, and things just don't end up in the place where they started from. Uh, that's just, uh, you know, the, the basic gist of it. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, it being, um, you know, anything special or anything like that, uh, it really isn't. Uh, I had a, you know, a pretty good time watching it. Again, this isn't my, you know, favorite uh, giallo form, uh, much like, uh, you know, the Bava and Argento and Fulci style gialli. Um, more than uh, this type, but uh, but yeah, I, it was uh, it was interesting. I mean, you know, uh, every time you know it kind of you know as it moved for again, trying not to go into spoilers or anything, um, but you know as it moves along, it got more and more interesting. Uh, and again, like I said, you know, it ends up uh, in a in a place that you probably didn't expect it to um, when it first started out. But as it goes along, you start realizing, okay, well, all right, now I see, you know, where this one is probably going to go. And it doesn't really stray too far from your expectations, I don't think. Uh, so overall, I would give this film a six out of 10. Um, you know, it's definitely worth a watch, I think. Um, uh, but it's not something that I'm going to keep coming back to. Um, you know, I had a good time with it. It is what it is. And it's, uh, it's time to move on. So, uh, 6.0 is what I'm going to give this one. Uh, if you've seen A Quiet Place to Kill, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. I always like to hear what you guys have to say. And before you head out, smash that thumbs up for me. Uh, that really helps the video out here on YouTube. And of course, I appreciate that support from you guys. And if you haven't subscribed to Neon Black Reviews, uh, go ahead and do that as well. Just click that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it, turn on those notifications, and that way you'll never miss a review. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you.